In this video, I'm going to return to a topic I've touched on before. That is the concept of hell. Not the idea of an actual physical realm, but hell from a psychological perspective. And, as I've stated in my last video, everything is psychological. According to Carl Jung, hell represents the disturbing aspect of the collective unconscious. What did he mean by that? The collective unconscious is universal. Every human being has been endowed with the psychic archetype layer since his or her birth. It's innate. You don't come about the collective unconscious through education or other conscious means. What's going on is deep in our subconscious. The same symbols have similar meaning across various cultures and unrelated time periods. Whether we realize it or not, the collective unconscious, this universal library of human knowledge, is the very transcendental wisdom that guides us. Jung stated that all religious experiences must be linked with the experience of the archetypes of the collective unconscious. Thus, all gods and demons, even their location, such as hell, are part of a psychic experience of the path that leads one to the realization of our psychic wholeness. In Jungian psychology, hell would then be the place where the shadow resides. The shadow was originally Jung's poetic way of conveying the prominent role played by the unconscious in both psychopathology and the ongoing problem of evil. Now just above the level of the collective hell lies the personal hell. This hell is a place of the personal demons that feed the shadow in the lower realm. And from time to time, most of us feel a need to roam in this hell. We all feel guilt, so we need, we feel a need for torment. Thus, we feel a need for hell. Nietzsche described guilt as a disease that humanity caught when it formed its first social communities. But even though we live in artificial constructs we call nation states under repressive executive authorities we call governments, our primitive instincts have never faded away. Instead of lashing out, we turn our instincts for cruelty inward toward ourselves because social laws forbid violence. And because we internalize these instincts, we grow sick of existence. Nietzsche refers to this notion as the most insidious illness ever to afflict humankind, an illness for which we have not yet recovered. So, for us on the left-hand path, what are we to do? The collective hell is there whether we like it or not, but how should we confront this personal hell of our own making? First, we have to acknowledge that it's very real. Next, we must free up our minds and enter our personal hell on our own accord without the masochistic justification for torment created by guilt. We have to deny guilt, a byproduct of the Christian slave morality that permeates our society. In truth, we should have let guilt and slave morality go when we first step foot on the path. While in hell, though, we must confront the dark entities that dwell in the abyss. We must stare them down and in some cases embrace them and never turn our backs on them. Also, in the fires of hell burn the source of the black flame, the spark of individualistic self-awareness. It is in our personal hell that we first see this glow, and from hell we must lift it up and initiate it into our lives. In the end, we should never let our personal hell ruin our existence. 
Hell should be a place to find empowerment. For the black flame is fueled by hell's torments. The flame that lights the path.